Hello. In this new video in English, I made another short extract of a recent training session about Capella. In about 10 minutes, I will try to introduce the main concepts of the Arcadia method, and in particular, explain the objectives of the five engineering levels. Enjoy. So Arcadia is one example of MBSC methodology as that contains a language also. So it's difficult to compare, for instance, for, for people who know UML or SysML, you cannot compare directly UML or SysML with Arcadia because Arcadia is both a language and a method. When you compare SysML and Arcadia, you just compare SysML with the modeling language that is inside Arcadia. On the Capella website, there is a, a nice uh, web page about this showing an example of SysML model done with a Cameo Systems Modeler and the same case study done in Capella showing the equivalence between the diagrams and the concepts, adding some stuff because of the Arcadia method also. Okay, so Arcadia is an acronym. It means architecture, analysis, and design, integrated approach. It's supposed to be a model-based engineering method for systems, hardware and software architectural design. So Arcadia was developed between 2005 and 2010 by Thales internally through an iterative process that involved a lot of architects from a lot of different units. Arcadia was very much influenced by the system engineering handbook, distinction between the need and the solution, that's basic system engineering. So it's in every system engineering standard also. And also it promotes a viewpoint-driven approach. Central viewpoint in Arcadia is a functional viewpoint. We use functions to describe what the system shall do, and then we use function also to describe what the logical or what the physical components are doing and how what they do will contribute with what we ask the system to do. But we need also, of course, to ensure that the performance viewpoint, the safety viewpoint, any important viewpoint in the context of a specific project is met, is compliant. So we need to see the same system from a lot of different viewpoints. And once again, it will depend on the system and on the project. So you will have a lot of different viewpoints that will give some architectural drivers. And all the job of the architect in the end will be to, to find the best compromise between all these viewpoints. We have a little example here. This is the original example of Arcadia. So it's quite old now. It's a, it's a car radio set, an old one, but it's enough to illustrate the main concepts of Arcadia in, in, in five minutes already. When we speak about a, a system, we need to separate things. We need to separate what the system has to do, the problem to solve, to separate it from the solution. How will the system work? How will the system be built inside? So the basic distinction is between defining well the problem with the customers, with the end users, and then proposing a well-defined solution that meets the specification. In the first days of Arcadia, it started at what is called the system analysis level. Okay, what the system has to do for its users, you need to identify who are or what are the external systems and human users of the system. Our system is a black box, in Capella, a dark blue box that will talk to an environment consisting of human or non-human things that exist already. So these are called actors, like in UML and SysML. These light blue boxes in, in, in Arcadia Capella, they, they are called actors. The system is seen as a black box. Structurally, it doesn't contain anything yet, but we want to define what it does in terms of functions. So the green rectangles that you see here are system level functions. So Arcadia started there in the beginning of Arcadia. Then under the influence of architectural frameworks, in these architectural frameworks, people speak first about operational capabilities, operational activities, operational nodes, and things like that. So we are not speaking about one system yet. We are speaking about some capabilities that are offered that 
that we need and we don't know yet which system or even system of systems will provide them. So we go back to the real need. Here we are not speaking about the radio set. We are speaking about people in a car wanting to get news and listen to music. We are speaking about the real need. We could speak also about business modeling, business process modeling. What is the real need? The real need is not to turn a button to choose a, a radio station. The real need is to get some news, maybe to listen some, to some music because we have a long trip and so on. So there are different systems that probably can fulfill this same need, the real need. Defining the real need, the business process that we want to automatize with the future system is the objective of this first level, which is called operational analysis in Arcadia, which is really business process modeling. And then we try now to define at the second level, at system analysis level, one system as a black box and the functions that are inside this system will help to automatize partially, probably, maybe a subset of the operational need. So operational analysis in Arcadia is the first level to help better define the system analysis level, which is the mandatory one. By the way, operational analysis is optional in Arcadia. Then we will open the black box. First, at logical level, we define what we call logical components. So for instance, in a radio set, independently of any technology, the user will have to communicate with the radio set. So we need some user interface. We will have to choose at, at physical level whether this user interface is with simple cheap buttons or with a touch screen or with some voice recognition, or I don't know what. So probably the price will not be the same and so on. But it's quite interesting to be able to define a first level of architecture of internal components that are not yet stuck to one specific implementation, to one technology. Okay, that's really the idea of the logical architecture level in Arcadia and in the Incosian book. The benefit is that the logical components will be very stable in time. There will be always a user interface in a radio set. Okay, then you can have maybe three or four or five different physical architecture using different technologies. Okay, so logical architecture, sort of intermediary high level design view. Okay, and logical components, they can contain sub logical components, but the boundary should be as soon as you are talking about one specific technology, you should stop and it should go to physical architecture. So physical architecture is the fourth level, is where you define precisely the physical components that will be necessary inside your system, hardware, software, and things like that. Cables, okay, you can go to the level of detail you want. Maybe it's not the best tool to, to describe how cables are arranged. Maybe you, you should use some additional tools after, depending on the subdomain and things like that. But for, once again, high level architectural design, you can do what you want with, uh, with Capella. And you can, in particular, distribute software on hardware. We will see that we have two types of physical components, the blue ones and the yellow ones. And typically, the blue ones tend to represent software and the yellow ones tend to represent hardware, even if it's not the official definition, in fact, but in practice, it's very often the case. So it enables to do a little the same as we did in the old uh, deployment diagram in UML, where we deployed some software components on hardware devices. Okay, so this physical architecture level is the a, is a most uh, detailed level where you have the, the biggest number of components usually in, a, in an Arcadia Capella model. And then you even have a fifth level. In Arcadia, more and more, it's not seen any longer as a real level, architecture level. It's more seen as an additional viewpoint on the physical architecture. It's more how these physical components will be distributed to either internal designers or external designers, subcontractors, or they will be both off the shelf cuts. So in fact, at this level, you don't add new functions. You mostly group physical components into groups that will be under the responsibility of different uh, teams, in fact, internal or external. It's no longer refinement. Usually you refine when you go down. 
you have maybe more functions in the system that you had activities uh, at operational levels and you have several logical components with more logical functions that will help to realize the system level functions and you will have a lot of physical components that will realize the few logical components, high level logical components and so on. So usually you refine when you go down and you have more and more concepts, you have more and more functions, more and more uh, components, more and more uh, links and so on. Except when you go from physical architecture to EPBS and then you have less concept. In fact, you, you should have less configuration items than physical components because each configuration item in EPBS is in fact a, a grouping of one or several physical components. You have no functions in EPBS, so you don't refine anything. So more and more in the Arcadia presentations that you will find uh, done by Thales on the web or things like that, you will find four levels. Okay, operational analysis, first one, system analysis, second one. So these two help to define what the system shall do. They often say in a more detailed way, operational customer need analysis and system need analysis. By adding the word need, maybe we understand better. And then we talk about architecture, logical architecture, physical architecture, APBS. So to make a little summary, in Arcadia, they preferred to define their own language because they had some, some bad feedback with the use of UML and CSML, in particular because of the lack of the function concept, which is a quite general feedback on the use of CSML in the industry. Then it has been uh, used, Arcadia, in, uh, in a lot of different uh, domains, different types of systems, in a lot of Thales uh, units. And very important also, I, I already stressed it, Arcadia can be applied both top-down, bottom-up, middle-out, incrementally, iteratively. So it's, it's really very possible to do um, agile modeling, okay? It's just a mindset, in fact. Hello again. I hope you have enjoyed this little video which is really a very short but representative extract of an actual Capella training that I gave a few weeks ago. If you are interested and wish to know more about our trainings and about our next sessions, you will find all the information on our website. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to PRFC channel. Bye bye.